When you all come to my channel for a product review, most of you know what I'm gonna deliver to you, right? I don't follow trends. I don't follow whatever is hyped up out there and generating clicks. I like to deliver that honest, real dedicated user review. Hence the reason I'm late for the Zowie EC2CW mouse review. I really wanted to give this some time. I mean, this is something I'm really passionate about and really close with here. You all know I absolutely love Zowie mice. There's no denying that. I love the EC2 and of course the ZA, so hopefully that one's following soon, right? And I love plump ergo mice. So I didn't want my excitement to fill this review too much, even though I'm still excited, right? I didn't want to jump on hype clicks right out the gate, which every YouTuber wants, and we all do it occasionally, you know what I mean? But I wanted to give this that dedicated time and that true user's experience so I can let you know about the pros, the cons, the goods, the bads, so on and so forth. And I also did not want to flood this review with a comparison of my main mouse being the Death Adder V3 Pro. You all know I have mained this since day one on my workstation in my game station. So no, I will not be flooding this with comparisons here. I will do a dedicated comparison video of both of these mice since again, they're so near and dear to me that will follow this video eventually. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you can catch that one as well. That whole thing just rhymed. So right here, you're looking at everything that you get in your box, minus the USB cable, since that's still plugged into my PC. But you get an extra set of feet, your manual, your enhanced receiver, which we're gonna talk a lot about this, your main receiver or your main dongle, your adapter here from USB-C to A, and then of course, your mouse. This thing is solid top to bottom, no creaking, no flexing whatsoever, minimal button movement, which you really gotta lean into here, no rattling, whenever you clank it down, nothing feels loose, it is solid, and that's what we always expect and always get from Zowie. So I'm not gonna sit here and harp on the shape of the EC2CW, right? It's the exact same shape as we've seen before, but there are some differences here, of course, other than it being wireless, right? And talking about the weight of the Zowie wireless mouse here, it's lofty, it's not heavy, right? When we slap it on a scale over here, we're gonna get, on my scale, I'm getting 77.7. .7. Oh, lucky mouse here, right? But it's lofty, and why I state it's lofty, again, I'm not gonna make this a massive comparison, but looking at other big mouse, for example, the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro, we're gonna slap that on a scale, we're getting 63.4 grams. Again, is this heavy? No, it's not, but we're just seeing so many other mice, whether it be Ergo or whatever, they're not just these little teeny tiny mice not right now, that we're getting more used to that. When you get this in your hand, you feel the loftiness of it. Now sticking on that topic of weight, I really wanna talk about this here, because a lot of you are probably like, oh, yo, man, that's way too heavy. What are they even thinking, right? So so, so hear me out here, and I've stated this in many other videos, but if you haven't watched any of those, let's go on and rehash it. Number one, the weight of the mouse of course, shape, right? We're all very familiar with this. This mouse fills out the hand. It's not a tiny fingertip and mouse with a lot of weight where you're really gonna feel it. This is in your hand, so again, it's kind of part of your arm rather than part of your fingertips. Again, I've said this many a times before, and you can catch my drift. You don't really feel that weight since it's such a bigger mouse filling out your hand. Now, other thing is as far as the surface you're using. I have the Lethal Gaming Gear, the Saturn Pro here. It's a slower pad. I've always used slower pad. Odin Zero Gravity, the x GP1 have been some of my mains. I've been using this one quite a bit lately, hence the reason you've seen it in so many of my mouse videos. And it's a slower pad. And yes, a slower pad with a heavier mouse, you're gonna feel that combination of the weight a little bit more. And, and I did. And I love this pad, not just so much for the control, but also for the comfort. I don't get skin irritation or anything like that. So it's a combination of why I love this pad, not just the control of the mouse. So if you're like me and you're using that, I think you're gonna feel the weight, which I did. Now, if you come over to this, what is this? The Mercury Pro or whatever, I don't know which one, but this is the fast one. You can just see it slide across here. I didn't even do that on this. You can kind of see it kind of come to a jolt and break right there. On this guy, you can just feel it just slide across and that weight is almost gone. So if you're using a medium to faster pad, I don't think the weight is going to matter at all in this mouse or heck any other heavier mouse. You know what I mean? Now me personally, I can't use a pad like this. It's got like that hybrid surface. It's rough. I feel it on my wrist. It's just uncomfortable. But if you use this kind of pad, the weight's not going to affect you at all. If you do use a slower pad like myself, you're going to definitely notice that weight a little bit more. So hopefully that squashed any concerns of weight for you. Again, take into account 
how you grip the mouse, which obviously this is gonna be in your hand, into your palm, a really full big mouse like I stated before, but also take into account what kind of surface you're using and you're gonna be able to decide, is that a little bit too lofty, not so much heavy for my gaming situation or not. Now let's go ahead and talk about this mouse being wireless. And I love how Zowie implemented this. Again, we got our enhanced receiver and we have our regular receiver, our regular little dongle here, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But this receiver is also a little charging dock. Bam, you set it on there, charges, you get your light indication on top there, letting you know how much it's charged. As you see right down here, you now have the split feet rather than the one foot across, as we've seen in Zowie mice before. But again, it just goes right in there, kind of magnetizes itself and you're good to go. I absolutely love that. Why the heck did they include this then? Like if you buy this mouse, just use the enhanced receiver, right? I mean, I don't think anybody's gonna really notice a difference of this pending your setup. And I got a lot of wireless stuff, headsets, keyboards, other devices all around my house and everything, even in my room, Alexas and whatnot, you know? So I say just use the enhanced one. And the cool thing about this is maybe if you got a computer in the other room, right? Laptop or something like that, just plug this into it. You can use the mouse in two locations. I think that is really cool. Now, could have Zowie offered it just with the regular receiver and maybe reduce the cost of this mouse, which we'll talk about at the end, that might have been a pretty good option. But again, I love how they implemented it here. And me personally, I love the simplicity. Now, the other concern on your mind might be, why the heck did Zao use a 3370? But come on, guys, 3370, 3395, whatever the heck is out these days, you know what I mean? They are all top notch and they all perform flawlessly. You're not gonna notice a difference at all. As you see, you got your standard uh, adjustments on the bottom of Zowie, you got your polling rate, you got your DPI on the bottom here. You can also adjust the lift off different distance. It's like holding the side button and pressing the top one and then vice versa on some other buttons right there as well. And right down here is how you adjust from the enhanced receiver to the USB dongle. So really cool again, if you wanna use it on multiple PCs. And yes, you can also use this mouse wirelessly. Again, my USB cable still plugged into my PC and you do have a slight angle just kicking up from this very mild angle. But again, with that enhanced receiver, I don't think you're ever gonna to have to use this with the wire right there. And talking about battery life, well, I really couldn't time it because I've always left it on the enhanced dock right there where I can just charge it over time. So again, I stink and love it. Now, something else that's really nice about the EC2CW here, which they also did in the EC2C, but say if you're using the original EC2, wow, I'm getting confused with all these EC2 ones, right? Is the buttons on them. Most importantly, the side buttons. So again, I have this one modded with grips and everything, but the side buttons on the original EC2 were incredibly mushy. Like, gosh, can we even catch that in the camera? They go into the shell, they just feel like controller buttons, if not even worse than controller buttons, especially in the middle, they just sink in as you can see. Now coming over to the ET EC2C, they did fix that. Very nice and crispy right here on the side buttons. And that's exactly what they did on the wireless one. These are incredibly crispy as you can hear. That also goes with one and two, and there's not a lot of play. Can we get that in the light? You can see right there, bam, right down to business. Now the scroll wheel is a bit different. Let me go on and pull out the original here. How can any of us ever forget the sound of a Zowie scroll wheel? Over here, EC2C, tried and true, right? Coming over here to the wireless one, it's toned down a little bit. You still have those nice tactile steps, but it's toned down a bit. So as far as the wireless one compared to the old one, it's a no brainer if that's what you're still on. Yeah, you get this. There's so many improvements of scroll wheel in those buttons. If you're on the EC2C, no it's not. But again, that scroll wheel is significantly more relaxing and just relieving to use rather than this mid game. I like what they did here. So keeping this video short and sweet, again, we didn't have to talk about the shape pretty much at all because we're all familiar with it. Now again, whenever I compare it to my Death Adder V3 Pro, I will be talking a lot about this shape right there. So again, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell, and I hope to see you for that one. But again, talking about this short and sweet, at the end of the day, what we gotta talk about is the MSRP on this guy coming in at 150 bucks. We usually say, 
That's expensive, right? Death Adder V3 Pro, 150 bucks. Viper, 150 bucks. We're seeing a lot of mice in 120 to 150 bucks these days. It's just what we're seeing. Is it inflation or what? Or is it just they know they can get this out of the market? I have no idea. I'm sure it's a little bit of inflation because we're seeing it in a lot of stuff right there, right? Is this mouse worth 150 bucks? You know what, I should pull this out there because this is a really thing that sets us apart from any of the other products we're looking at right there. And I would say, yes. 100% is worth 150 bucks. Again, you gotta look, you're getting this dock. You're not looking at it just the mouse right here, you know what I mean? You're getting a solid build product. You're getting that Zowie build right here. This thing is stinking solid top to bottom. The simplicity that's packed within it right here, again, you're getting more than just the mouse, which again, I think is just 150 bucks. Now, if they just offered it like this, a dongle and a mouse, 150 bucks, I'd kind of be like, uh, I don't know, we really got some other things to think about. But since we get it like this, I think that truly does justify it. Would we like to see a little bit lighter weight? I would say, yeah, it would be nice. But again, think about your play style, your surface and what we talked about, and that's what's gonna justify it for you. So at 150 bucks, I think it justifies it. I love the mouse. Is it gonna replace my main, the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro? Subscribe, hit the bell, hope to catch you there. Bye now.